Interviews with the best in their fields, teaching you how to excel in careers that don't require traditional college. You're listening to the College Alternative Podcast. Insider tips and advice straight from the experts. And now, here is your host, James Christian. All right, guys. So today we're talking with doula Domina Kirk, and she's been a doula for eight years. And if any of you guys are wondering what a doula is, it's a typically it's a woman. Normally, it's a woman um, who helps other women during the birth process. Now, my wife and I we utilize a doula, um, and my wife loved it, and I really liked it too because it really helped us along during the birth process. Um, I really, honestly, didn't really know. Uh, what was going on, um, i.e. how best to help my wife. And our doula really did a great job um, providing services to, to my wife, um, comforting her, uh, relaxing her, de-stressing her, etc. cetera. Um, so that was really, really awesome of a service. So Domina Kirk has been doing this for eight years and she actually co-founded a company, a doula service company out in New York, New York. Um, called Carriage House Birth. So she's going to be talking today about how she got into the business, uh, what makes a good doula, and how you can become one. So enjoy the show, guys. So hello and welcome, guys. Thanks for tuning into the show. Today we've got, and I'm really excited about this, today we've got Domina Kirk. Um, she's the co-founder of Carriage House Birth. Um, and you started this five years ago, but you've, you, your profession, part-time profession at least, is, is being a doula. And you've been a doula for eight years. Can you kind of just give your background a little bit? Sure. Um, well, I'm from England originally. I was always obsessed with babies and pregnant women growing up, but I also kind of knew that I was going to be a musician um, as my, that was going to be my chosen work. And once I had my son, I realized that I had to find something else that would be maybe more of service, a little more grounding. Um, as an adult has been a dream. You know, the music industry has changed dramatically over the years. So I just realized that I needed something, something that would, you know, balance me out. And I started looking into being a birth attendant and went to do a training, which was really easy. And um, they, they're all over the city. We're lucky because I live in New, in New York. So everything is just, you know, there's like one a week. <laughs> um, but I basically went to my training and I happened to know a lot of doulas that were working in Brooklyn and um, friends, just had a lot of friends in the birth community and I was able to kind of jump right in. Um, I worked with an older doula who had um, always said that she thought I would be, she just thought I had what it took. I had like a compassionate nature, um, you know, pretty empathetic and calming. <laughs> so she really thought that I would be good at it and I would do well. So I started going to birth with um, with her as an assistant. Okay. And from there, it just kind of picked up. And I found my own, um, I think after about a year, I, I decided that I needed to find a partner. And I, I met a woman named Samantha Huggins, who is my one of my partners now. And we built Carriage House Birth from the ground up from there. Nice. Okay. So attitude is everything. The last thing you want is some <laughs> to add to the chaos <laughs> of birthing. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm really excited to talk to you today. And, and, and uh, you know, it's great to have you on here because, you know, I, we, you know, my wife and I have kids and, um, mm -hmm. you know, we actually, I didn't really know what a doula was until my wife in introduced me to the concept, but I mm -hmm. found as a, as a, as a guy, even having a doula, um, as part of as part of the uh, birth experience, um, really was helpful for me too, and, and of course for my wife definitely, but for for a guy. So I was really interested in having you on. So so what what mm -hmm. is a doula? What do you guys do? A do the word doula comes from the Greek word female. It's it means female servant. So a doula is somebody who provides support for the family um, and sometimes just the mother, but usually. Um, a mother and her partner, and what we're doing is really providing informational, physical, spiritual support for the family. Um, 
And that can start as soon as, you know, the day of the birth, or it can be from the moment the mother pees on a stick. It really can be, you know, sometimes we know the family the entire pregnancy. Sometimes we just meet them, um, you know, a month before or even the day of. So, you know, we would ideally love the the family to feel very close to us. Mm-hmm. Um, but often what we're doing is just being really present in, um and in the birth and we are you know first ones to arrive last ones to leave um there's no shift change really with doulas um they're they're a present constant loving um force you know on the day Mm -hmm. and in hospitals that can be very it's very needed um when with all the shift changes and environmental changes going from a waiting room to a labor room from your home to the hospital it's nice just to have that one person who's consistent. Yeah, I mean, the doctor only shows up right at birth, typically, mm-hmm. unless they find a problem, or or the nurse only exactly. periodically checks in on you. So they're not always there. So that, yeah. Have have moms and expected mothers really approached you and, and told you uh, what the benefits that they're experiencing are? Yes, and we hear test- we have testimonials. We, we receive them all the time. People... Um, I was just saying, like, yeah, if I hadn't had a doula, I know I would have decided to have that intervention just because I was tired, just because that nurse was um, sort of bullying me or telling me, do I want my baby to be healthy? Do I want my baby to live? I mean, the scare tactics in hospitals can be pretty atrocious. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, doulas, doulas are there also to kind of by the family time, if there is time, the doula can say, hey, you know, you can take a minute here to really think about what you want to decide. Um, the hospital settings can often be so pushy, you know, yeah. and you don't feel like you have time. I mean, there, of course, there are emergency situations that arise, but often, you know, the, the family has time. So the doula is really putting the ball back in the family's court and... Um, I feel like that's the biggest thing that doulas are coming back. I mean, families are coming back to the doula with just really thanking them for giving them, for normalizing the process and giving them that reminder that they have time. And you're kind of referring back to, uh, you know, a mom or a family's birth plan, right? And trying to stick with that. Mm -hmm. And and that's kind of, you're you're kind Mm -hmm. of their advocate in a certain sense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, advocacy is really is exactly what we do. I mean, we're never going to speak on behalf of the family. Mm-hmm. Um, we're never anybody, anybody's voice, but we really are there to, you know, prenatally, if we have that that luxury of being able to really know, get to know them before they go into labor, then that's, that's, that's the dream scenario. And then we really know, um, we really know these people and we know what they want. Um, so, yeah. Okay, awesome. And then, okay, so... You kind of referred. Uh, you kind of talked a little bit about how you got into to becoming a doula there, but uh, um, what really drove you into the position? What really was there a drive to become a doula, um, and what was that? You know, I didn't even know what a doula was when I became pregnant with my son <laughs> at twenty-four. And that's, that's I most really, people. I knew that's most people out there, right? It's it's true. It's, until you start doing your research or you know somebody who had one, you really don't. I mean, they they've come back. I say come back in quotations, but really like, you know, they've been around since the dawn of time. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's women supporting women during childbirth. And there is also, there are male doulas out there. Oh really? I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a whole other show though. Um, (laughs) and we, um, so what happened was I knew I wanted a little bit more support than just my partner and, um, and, you know, various family members coming in and out of my um, birth situation, which was going to be at home. Um, and my friend said, well, you should get a doula. And I met an amazing doula who gave me the best, I mean, it was the best first impression of a doula ever. She was warm and maternal and just, you know, she was very seasoned. She'd been doing it a long time. She had a PhD and I think it was like maternal health and wow. I was just floored by her, by her presence, by her maternal, inst- her energy as a, a mother herself. And I was like, that's it. She's hired. Everything's going to be 
great. I ended up not um, I ended up not being able to have her at my birth. So I, um, based on some of the rules of my uh, my midwife, my midwife only worked with midwife assistants who were more medical, mm-hmm. and I and I was I had to let my doula go, which was actually very hard for me. But I, of course, was listening to my midwife who was going to catch my baby. So. I thought, okay, well, she knows better. Um, And, you know, my due date came and went, and I had no doula, and I could feel it right away. I felt that absence of care. Um, Somebody who I was emailing regularly, I was asking what this meant and what that meant, and just checking in about how I was doing, if I was having a bad day, if I was really hormonal, if I wasn't sleeping, if, you know, anything, I could refer to my doula. And um, I really felt that gap and once I went into labor I had a midwife's assistant who came over she was um lovely but she was a medical assistant I didn't get that 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 nurturing um energy from her I didn't get that quality of care and um once once my son was born I remember just feeling like god if only I'd had that woman that was there just putting her forehead to mine you know telling me it was all going to be okay and that I was do- that I, that it was normal and that I was doing great you know mm-hmm. um if I had that I know it would have been easier for me I wouldn't have had that doubt and was young and you know so I just knew it and um so once my son was about six months old I reached out to the only doula I knew and I said I know I could be what I didn't get you know I could be that for someone and I ended up going to a training and that was it <laughs> yeah, and I, I yeah, I, I think during that experience of, you know, birth and everything like that, too, I think it's not just, mm-hmm. you know, let's get the baby out. I think it's a, an experience, you know. And, oh, and, man, and, I mean. Yeah and, yeah, and I'm speaking from a guy's perspective, you know, and definitely not a woman's sure. perspective. But but it seems like, you know, uh, taking care of your, your whole or your well-being during mm-hmm. the five hours, 10 hours, 15 hours you know, uh, or 78 hours. Oh my like goodness. Mine. Okay. I couldn't even imagine that. <laughs> uh, but that's, 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 that's very important. Really necessary. And, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and it's very interesting too. It's just kind of interesting how the medical community has really evolved over time as far as, um, labor is concerned. Um, yeah. You know, it, you know, back in the caveman days, you know, you did one thing and then it kind of progressed to today where, you know, I think we're seeing, and definitely correct me if I'm wrong here, but we're definitely seeing women taking more of an active role in what they want, especially, you know, um, Mm -hmm. at the hospital or uh, water births at home or or just at home in general uh, with doulas, et cetera. And and that's just really, really nice to see. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and so what are some of the pros and cons uh, of being a doula that you found? I mean, the pros are that you get to watch people become parents and there's nothing like more beautiful and fulfilling and humbling. And I feel like, you know, it's it's new every time. Every single birth I attend, I cry, you know. I don't mm-hmm. sob <laughs> the way I used to because I couldn't believe what I was witnessing. But I, it's always so moving and it's always such a... It's such an incredible way to reset anything that's going on in my life at the time. So I feel really grateful to get to do that um, and kind of check in with myself through the work I'm doing because if I'm going through, if I'm having a tough day or a tough month or, you know, just, you know, being a human being in the world, I'm a single mother, you know, so mm-hmm. just like being stressed out, living in New York and then going to a birth, it's like time stops, you know, and mm-hmm. everything kind oh, yeah. of falls away. I mean, sure, things happen. I've seen everything that you can imagine going wrong, going wrong. Um, at a birth, I've, I've witnessed it. And that's taught me huge lessons as well. I mean, but it's always so, it right sizes, you know, everything in my life when I attend. So that's a huge pro and the reason I feel like I'll always do this. And then the cons are really just lifestyle, uh, being on call, um, having to drop things with a moment's notice, um, having to find childcare for my son. I'm lucky to have a very big community of the birth attendants around me, um, and his father is very close by and very close to us. 
so I feel kind of blessed there. But to do this work, you have to be able to drop everything. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, that's stressful. You know, that can be hard making plans. All my friends think I'm a real flake. Um, they can't trust that I'll show up to anything. <laughs> but <laughs> they still love me and they understand. You know? <laughs> if only births went according to schedule. <laughs> if you could plan oh, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so but what I'd ma- say, yeah, yeah, that's the biggest yeah. con. Okay, yeah. and so so what makes what makes a great duel in your mind? Um, you know, I guess kind of you referenced that one. Uh, I don't know if it's a mentor for you mm-hmm. that in, that initial contact with the doula that you had. Um, but but what would make a great doula? What is the greatest kind of? I think a woman or a man that's open to being a beginner. You know, having a know it all doula is kind of my nightmare mm-hmm. um i want you know when i meet new doers i love they they read everything and they want to be a midwife and this is their life path you know i am all about those kind of ego beavers you know i really we hire brand new doulas all the time who don't have children who are 20 they have to also know how to switch off that kind of ego um and just be in the moment and be present for the mother in a way that she's maybe never been present. Okay. You know, active listening, um, being able to, you know, um, take, like, be able to leave their life at the door and just hold space for the mother. I feel like that makes the best do it. And it doesn't matter if she's had children or not. If you have that ability to be entirely present and hold that space for her and, not make it about you and have a certain level of selflessness, then that's what is a great, that's what makes a great doula in my mind. And then of course, over time you, you become more seasoned. Um, you start getting a certain amount of intuition around this work and that makes you, you know, of course it's noticeable to the families, your mm-hmm. knowledge of the hospital, the layout, the landscape, the way protocol, you know, protocols and the way things work. In, in the system, you know, that stuff's really impressive too. But in the beginning, oh, it's just an yeah. energy. Okay. Just an energy exchange. And I feel like, but there's there's a doula for everyone that needs one. And, you know, someone might love this kind of doula and someone might really want someone who knows, who's book smart and knows her stuff. It doesn't matter that she's got a calm energy. <laughs> they just want her, they just want to know. You know, that that's a mother who's maybe a little more type A, a little more controlling, needs things more mapped out. Um, so, you know, that's why Carriage House has worked so well. There's 40 doulas in New York City and that we mentor and help. Um, and then there's 45 in L.A. Oh, wow. And, and yeah, so we have these doulas. And if, there's, if one isn't right for one family, we, can, we hope we have one that, that is a good fit. And so you're kind of talking about about giving of yourself to the family, and mm-hmm. also you yeah. know knowing hospital protocols, um, mm-hmm. kind of kind of establish yourself in that in that hospital environment, which is which is different. You know, most most people besides giving birth or you know a family member getting hurt, they really aren't in that environment for the most part, except if you're no. a healthcare professional. And so it's it is a different That's, culture yeah. there. Um, it is. And so that kind of rolls into the next question here of giving of yourself, and that must really help establish um, a level of trust with your client. Mm-hmm. Are there any other ways to establish trust? I mean, like I said, if we meet them early enough on in the pregnancy, then we have at least two or three meetings with them that are hours long in their homes. Um, but I think keeping that line of communication open throughout the pregnancy really helps. I have you know, clients that I meet up for tea, I meet up for meals, um, you know, I love to stick to um, kind of a, you know, I like to keep it at two or three meetings, but if someone really needs more support than that, I'm always open to meeting up with moms and families more often than that. I really feel like it's just, it's showing up, whether it is just through emails um, or texting, you know, um, or actually, me being if you have if you are able to actually see them face to face to face more than a, a few times before the birth, that is a is a great way. I, I think that I think you're hitting something there when 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 you when you think about the world and 
how fast everything is and everybody's so involved mm-hmm. with with themselves and with with their jobs mm-hmm. and with their families and and if you take the time to show and develop yourself to them and just be open and available yeah. and, and like you said show up on time yeah. you know yeah i, I that's think that's everything. special yeah yeah and i've noticed you know the families i meet later in the pregnancy and we have one meeting you know i like to think i'm a i'm a you know seasoned enough doula at this point to be able to just adjust and be in the moment with them, you know, even though I don't know them so well and still provide a great service. But I definitely feel a stronger connection to the family if I know them for mm-hmm. longer, obviously. And I've had repeat, you know, I've had second and third babies with people and, you know, those are almost, they're like, they're flawless energetically because there's so much trust in the room. And it's just the difference it makes is huge when obstetricians and midwives and hospitals really love doulas, you know, and they've, they've worked with you a number of times before. You can feel that in the room. The family can feel that, that connection and that trust between the care providers, mm-hmm. which I think is so invaluable to the family who's, you know, giving birth. Oh, yeah. Lowers the stress level, I'm assuming. And mm-hmm. it, it, it makes can. the birth process easier for the expecting mother. Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. So, so kind of moving on to the training aspect of sure. this and, and, um, you know, you mentioned apprenticeships, um, that you, your, mm-hmm. your company does, but are there any various, mm-hmm. um, nationwide or regional certifications out there that you can get to certify yourself as a doula? Yes. Um, well, Carriage House, we have a foundation training that we just started offering. We will start offering in January, which will train a doula um, in the basics. Okay. And then there is also Dona, D-O-N-A, that's been around for forever. Um, they're kind of the OG certifying um, body. Okay. And then there's Kappa, C-A-P-P-A. So these are all, you know, there are three, I believe, three-day trainings with a good amount of reading prior and after, and then you have to sit and do um, a a bit of um, continuing ed, sitting in on um, uh, birth education classes, lactation classes. Um, Ah, okay. For that continuing education to keep keep your cert? Okay. Yeah, and then you send send everything in to, um, back to... To the to the women who certified you, and um, and then they sign it off, and you have to attend. I believe it's five, three to five births, I think, to be certified. Okay. Um, it's been a while. <laughs> to brush up on it. Um, but yeah, so um, there are a number. Of, there's also Dura Trainings International DTI, um, and they're online, and they do a, a bit of a longer. I believe theirs is six months long. Okay. And so do you need to become certified to become a doula or is that just a sort of I mean, icing on the cake? That's, eh, you know, I, I feel like a good doula is a good doula, you know, uh-huh, and yeah. of course if she's done, she's done the training and she's been at it for a long time, but she didn't get certified, you know, it's kind of no big in my mind. It's kind of no big whoop. It's just a piece of paper, you know, but yeah. at the same time, families like to know that you had that follow through and you did it. Um, it means a lot to some people and some of my favorite doers were trained but didn't get you know didn't finish it off um i think it feels good and it and it looks good when you are if you are doing it more full-time um to have those credentials okay okay it makes you seem more perfect well it makes you more yeah. professional okay <laughs> yeah absolutely sure uh, so so you mentioned a couple different ones that are out there and so for somebody who's looking into getting this into into this as a career um, and trying to decide mm-hmm. between all these various options, uh, how how would somebody decide? What what are the pros and cons and, and et cetera? That's really. I feel like where you know we, for example, you know we feel like a, a lot of people say that we feel like a very appro- we're a very approachable doula collective. We're very, um, 
you know, people feel like they relate to us just as mothers and as people. I mean, we get made fun of all the time. We're the ta- the heavily tattooed doulas <laughs> who have a pretty, you know, we're, our social media following is pretty great. And so, and we just see a lot of people being like, wow, I could do this too. And you have all those kids that you, you're able to be on call. And, you know, it's a very, um, it's a, you know, so Carriage House, we feel like we definitely attract our, you know, people that are, I don't know, it's just like a cozy, a coziness um, that we have. And and our space also reflects that, our actual headquarters. Um, so that's, that's um, one thing I've heard about people who are drawn to our training. And okay. then Dona, Dona's just the, the, the original gangster. It's been there the longest. It's, you know, it's, it's just kind of meat and potatoes doula. It's, okay. it's the first one. Kappa, you know, to be honest, I don't know as much about Kappa. I know Kappa kind of came around the same time as Dona. It's just another another one. And then DTI is a longer. It's um, much more in-depth. It takes longer to certify. And it's online so people can really take their time and not have to be physically at the space to do the training. Um but they do offer in-house. I think they do travel and teach, but their their biggest presence is online, I okay. believe. Okay. So it sounds like there's there's not necessarily that much difference between some of the the big no. houses. Um, it's maybe exactly. w- what what you feel uh, works for mm-hmm. you. Is, yeah. Uh, okay. That's how you choose. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And if you don't want to become certified, you you mentioned your training out there. Um, are there apprenticeships? Are there, are there yes, um, that, and also let me mention money, of course, you know, ah, people, okay. what people can afford, you know, I mean, there's, we offer sliding scale, we offer um, in uh, payment plans, um, and I don't, I, I don't remember donor offering that, um, there might be installments that you can pay, so that's obviously a, a big, a huge thing. Um, we offer scholarships as well. Oh, wow. Us, so I'm, I'm not sure that people offer that. Um, with the others, but um, I'm, I'm, I have a feeling they may. Um, so that's just something I need. To, I wanted to throw in there. Um, <laughs> no, no, I mean, hey, then, but, you know, tuition is always is something to consider. You know, yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely that's true. Okay, cool. Um, and so, let's say you get trained um, in this, get certified, or you become a, you become an a, you you do an apprenticeship and um, mm-hmm. learn yep. from a mentor. Um, mm-hmm. You want to go into business. Um, and sometimes mm-hmm. you get a collective like yourself or you, you do it kind of on your own. Um, can you make this, and, and you do this actually part-time right now, um, you're, you're, yeah. a, you're a singer out in New York, but uh, I, can you start this off as a part-time do- job and then grow it into a full-time job or is there options to, yeah. to make this a full-time position? I mean, you know, I've seen both. I've seen... Women come in, you know, I've seen people, I should say, I keep forgetting their male doulas is kind of a new thing. People come to us who want to be doulas and they're like, I'm ready for the career change. I'm ready to leave my job. What do I have to do to get hired? Every time I meet a new family, I, I want this to be it. And I'm telling you, those people, they dive in and they get back what they give out. And then there are the people that are trying to you just see if this work is for them okay. or maybe they've kind of overly romanticized it. It's super beautiful. So they're like, wow, oh, this is going to be amazing. I can't wait to see my first birth. And then, you know, it's like a three day home birth that ends in a C-section or something. And, you know, thing, and they go, oh, this is not for me. Um, that was too grueling. I was up for days. I don't know how people do this. So I feel like, um, you know, we have a lot of doers kind of slowly weaning off of their jobs and taking maybe one birth a month, uh, and okay. that's manageable for them. And it's not much income. You know, first births, you're maybe getting an amount of money that is more donated, donation-based, and then you slowly can, you know, the more births you attend, the more money you can make. Um, so... You know, but then I have doers that I met a few months ago who dove in, quit their jobs, and they're already making their rent off of the work. So it really is what you put in, I believe, and how available you make yourself. And I feel like the doers that have, you know, maybe they work in, in like, advertising or they're a lawyer. I mean, it's crazy. We've had lawyers. We've had, 
um, obstetricians' daughters we've had, you know, who don't believe, who didn't grow up, uh, you know, speaking about natural birth or learning about it. You know, we've had um, people who have great jobs in bank, you know, money, finance, and they're like, I just need something else. I'm not fulfilled. I'm not happy, and I, I feel cold to this work. And then they end up quitting these 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 big jobs <laughs> that feel like to take better care of them yeah. um, to do this work. And we kind of laugh because we're like, wow, they must be. And they they end up working um, quite quickly, and they get into it fast because they really they want it. And you can feel that when you're a family hiring a doula. And you feel like that doula might be too busy for you, um, or that doula might have too many kids. I don't know. That's not really an issue if you have a good setup, but you know, too busy with another job because they will ask you. You know, if you do, you have another job. Do you have your own children? These are things that they want to know. Just it might make them feel better to know your availability when it comes down to it. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, our younger doulas who don't have kids who. Um, who quit their jobs and really go for it. You know, they work fast, but otherwise you can, you know, take it as slow as you want. Okay, awesome. And so why does it seem as though, you know, and this is just from my perspective here, but it just seems like mm -hmm. doulas are more and more banding together and forming groups mm -hmm. in, in cities. Why, why, does, why is that? Because doula work is, intense to say the least and it's the hours are really wonky <laughs> they are really tough and sometimes you could be out of birth for days sometimes you're coming home at three in the morning there's a sisterhood that i mean that there's like a village that carriage house really wanted to build and i know that's why doula collectives that i've known about have always existed it's building community in our profession so that someone's always home when you get home from a birth if it was a tough one you, maybe there was I mean you know it's hard to speak about but if the baby didn't make it or if something happened to the mother like these are huge traumas that if we don't know how to if we don't have support around um, you know can be really intense for us to process okay um, so, so that's really why we okay. de-stressing community um, having somebody to call in the middle of the night mm-hmm Okay. Well, okay, so you, you have that that kind of sisterhood, that kind of bonding, that community aspect, but I'm also assuming it also helps business business-wise too. Um because marketing, marketing yourselves is a lot easier and and um and that sort of thing might be a little bit better for you guys. Um so so yeah. kind of talking about that here. Um Say say a doula gets started here. What's the best route to to market yourself and and put yourself out out there to your community, your city, your town, and saying that your services are available? What 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 uh, marketing have um, you found works best? We have. A, I mean, we've it's ranged for us between uh, doulas just even putting up flyers um, in community centers, um, wellness centers, yoga studios coffee shops, leaving your cards around. Um, if you join a collective, you're most likely going to be put up on their website. Um, so a lot of the reason people decide to join collectives is for the promotional aspect and the community, just meeting other doers, um, you know, all in one place. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like, and then there's just word of mouth. If you start attending, you start attending and then you have... Um, positive experiences. People are happy with your your services. They're going to talk, and oh yeah, they will. Then Women will talk to you know that kind of <laughs> yeah, that kind of wildfire. That new mom, you know, they meet up for that coffee with their baby, mm -hmm. and they're just like, "Tell me about your birth," and everyone's talking about their birth, and um, <laughs> so you know, that's we get a real combination of, of course, social media today, and Instagram is huge for Carriage House, and and friends who have had babies with us, and. Um, our website and our, we do childbirth education um, classes and lactation support and grief and loss counseling and so it's just, we have people constantly in and out of carriage house so that's really where we how we stay so busy um, with referrals and doula hiring okay so but I really feel I yeah. think I think cards and flyers really do the trick in the beginning um, uh, okay so people, keep it, people keep will it take them Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Keep, okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so you're you're saying keep it simple, you know, do your printing or do your flyers, um, and then mm -hmm. join uh, a collective. Yeah, join a collective, and then you know, just just really kind of work work it in terms of trying out different things. You were talking about social media being big nowadays. Yeah. I don't think you can get around that anymore. I think you definitely need mm -hmm. to put yourself <laughs> put yourself online uh, through Facebook. And you said Instagram is working really well for you guys? Instagram, yeah. And the doers have their own accounts and they're posting beautiful images of, of, um, of their of their business, of their dual business, whether it's placenta encapsulation or birth doing, heading to a birth and they snap a picture or <laughs> meeting <laughs> with the mother. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, you know, meeting up with the family postpartum and taking a, a picture of the baby or with the family. I mean, it's just, it's, they're beautiful um, kind of journeys to, to watch. So I feel like doers accounts, Instagram accounts do quite well. It's okay. a great way to, to promote. And I think I think you're you're 100 percent correct as far as referrals are concerned. You know, it seems like mm -hmm. you know women talk to other women. You know, they're asking, hey, which 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 uh, OBGYN did you go to? Which hospital did you go yep. to? You know, which yep. doula did you get? You know, mm -hmm. and I think that kind of starts a, the the snowball rolling. Definitely and for for business for you guys. That's awesome. Okay, so yep. um, as far as insurance is concerned, do you guys? Um, have do you need insurance to become a doula? I mean, we we need it as a collective. We um, we actually require it. Okay. So yeah, they're independent um, in the independent contractors. So they have to come in with everything, and okay. then we take care of the promotion and the referrals. Yeah. Okay. And and what type of what type of insurance do you need? Do you just need a business insurance or do you need a medical medical insurance to It's medical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah, and there's a whole there's a bunch of different insurance companies that you can research, but we use one called C M and F Group. Okay. Um and they they, they do a pretty good yeah. We okay. we like them. So you do need insurance. Okay. That's good to yep. know. And um as far as insurance insurance companies, um, we were talking a little bit about kind of the development of um, essentially the labor market out there. Um, mm -hmm. Are are you finding that insurance companies are starting to recognize doulas as medical services, or is that just yeah. is that too far off in the future? It, it, it's actually starting to happen now. You're actually starting to see that. Yeah, it's it's a slow burn, but it's definitely starting to happen. Okay. Awesome. And so yeah. Yeah. is that just a regional thing or are you just see are you seeing national like Blue Cross Blue Shield starting to to, to pick not up, just yet. And to be honest, that's really not my I don't navigate um that stuff as much for families. I we actually have somebody in our collective who does that for family for our families. Okay. So I wouldn't be able to give you up to date information um on, on where it's at but um yeah it's definitely moving forward that's wonderful that's wonderful mm -hmm. um it really is <laughs> it gives it gives families more options there too and they, you yeah. know it helps you guys out i'm assuming um it does for sure okay so how do you establish how do you establish good relationships with um the hospital with the nurses uh, with the labor department? Um, so with the labor department, we just, it's just faces. We show up, if we're recognizable to them, um, if they've seen us before, um, you know, attending a birth, it, we have to kind of earn their trust. Um, that's something that over the years I find that you know, sometimes you get a labor and delivery nurse that loves doulas and understands the need for them and appreciates what doers do and then sometimes you get nurses that are maybe a little like what are you doing here what do you mm -hmm. guys really do how can you help us there's nothing you can do that we don't already do yeah um and i feel like doers who have been doing it a long time know how to not take that stuff personally and just get on with their job um and other doers might be younger doers might be a little more sensitive and um a little bit like intimidated by nurses but you know more and more nurses are coming are banding together with doers um but the doer really does need to know how to manage her energy and just stand her ground and be there for the family she came in with are you seeing that newer nurses coming that are just graduating are, are starting to um kind of 
uh, understand what doulas are and they're not getting as, um, they're, they're a little more open. It's, it's true. Okay. Yeah, the, the older doulas, the older wiser doulas, who, the grandma doulas, um, sorry, the grandma nurses uh, are the ones who have a little bit of a harder time with a doula. They like to kind of, you know, that's, I don't want to generalize, but I, yeah. you know, I've definitely noticed a trend with the doula, with the nurses that have done it a long time, maybe before we were even born, a little bit like, what can you do, really, for, uh-huh. this, for this woman? Okay. Um, and I just smile and go in for a hug at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and just do what I know how to do, and hopefully uh-huh. she, I don't get, hopefully I don't get in her way. <laughs> okay, well, but that's the, good. The younger, that's, doulas, yeah. the younger doulas really do, they're, they've maybe been trained as doulas as well um, at some point, uh, which is always great, and they're, they're a lot more, hap- you know, they're a lot more hip to kind of what a doula is, and they, um, they really appreciate the, the, the support. Okay, awesome. Okay, and, and so... Are there any legal risks to becoming a doula? Now, you did mention insurance a little bit there, but is there anything else mm-hmm. that sort of you need to go into this profession I mean, with your eyes open? Yeah, staying in your scope. You're not catching any babies. You're not doing any internal exams. You're a doula. You really, you know, I, I've been, I've been um, told off before for saying it like this, but, you know, you're from the waist up. And, mm-hmm. um, of course... You know, things happen. I had to catch babies before because they've come. They've come quickly, um, and and uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's risky. It's risky all the time. You know, if um, but the babies uh, in your in your scope. Okay, so stay um, stay within your scope of practice. Stay within your scope of practice and. Leave everything else to the medical professionals. You know, things that have happened to me in the past, and uh, um, where I've uh, it turned out okay because I I really didn't, you know, I didn't do more than I was allowed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had things happen with babies during transfers from hospital from home to hospital that had I been more involved on a medical level and I hadn't just been, you know, simply holding the mother's hand and telling her to breathe and helping her get through the contractions. If I'd been more involved, which I could have easily been, um, I would have, you know, things might've not gone the way they have legally. Mm -hmm. Um, so really just standing your ground and don't, don't be a hero. You're a doula. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so be mindful in the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so how, how do you manage uh, a client's labor with your personal schedule? Now you mentioned you're you're a single mom, mm-hmm. but uh, you know the um, his, 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 your your kid's dad is is definitely close to you guys, and you're able to you know yes. um, ha- have child support there. But um, for sure. for those for those people that maybe have kids or busy schedule, uh, how do you how do you kind of manage that? I mean, it's again, you know, deciding what your limit is with clients. If you really feel like you can only take one, let everyone know in your family, in your life, your friends, your, obviously your partners, that you are on call and allow them, you know, that, give them that information so that they don't have expectations. And, you know, I tell my son if he has some performance or something that there is a chance that I might not make it. You know, it's like lots of information, lots of communication. Um you know, I'm lucky that I have somebody who can come over in a moment, you know, to help me with my son. Not everyone has that, so they're dropping mm-hmm. their kids off at friends' houses. Plenty of single mothers out there who are doers, uh, who rely on the village, you know, surrounding them, um, whether it's grandparents or, you know, just friends or maybe other doers to help them when they have to go to a birth. Um, but it's really about clean, strong communication with your community when you're on call. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, just be honest. Mm -hmm, Exactly. (laughs) Don't try to overdo it. I mean, you know, yeah, being, you know, not trying to be like super doula, you know, uh, or super mom, you know, Uh, because that's that's a personality trait. A lot of doulas are are go-getters and they want to like help and they want to be a service and they want to maybe fix and, you know, they've got that, they might have that kind of personality. So this one really teaches you how to ask for help, which is really why I love it too. (laughs) So moms are asking you guys for help, and you're asking other mm-hmm. people for help. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice. Exactly. 
And so, you know, kind of the final business question here is, is how do you determine pricing? So I, I would assume mm-hmm. you're starting off, you're, you're, you're new to it, and your, mm-hmm. your prices are lower. But how do you kind of determine that? Um, is, are the rates different per city or different per experience? Yeah, uh, definitely per city. I mean, you know, an experienced doula in Virginia might be, you know, $1,500 or something for her services and that, and she could have been doing it for 10 plus years, but um, an experienced doula here in New York, um, in New York City, will put, could be up to 3500 um, you know, maybe even more. I haven't really heard of that very often, but I know there are some very pricey doulas out there. Wow. And then with Carriage House, it's, it's based on experience level, so if she's only attended a few or a handful, she's going to be um, accepting donations, um, kind of volunteering her services and allowing the family to decide what they can afford. And then as she goes up in experience, then she can make more, you know, anything can go as from 500 to 800, then to 12, I believe, 15, 2, 28, and then 3, I believe is the, the top amount of carriage house um, uh, offers. Okay. And this is for New York. This is for New York prices, though. This is New York. These are New York prices, for sure. I mean, listen, yeah, and I've been to other places in the country where, and I'm just like, that's amazing, but that's, you know, that's how much that dude really needs to live in that part of the country, you know? Well, I think that's pretty pretty interesting about the donation side of the house, too. I kind of think think that kind of sets her prices initially. And we have sliding scale, too. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we don't, and Carriage House is really big into, you know, this is what, we this is our fee, but what do you what do you got? You know, and if we can make it work with that doula, we will. We'll see how low she'll slide her her scale. We really try to make it work for everyone. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Um, so, kind of as a general overview of, of doulas, uh, are, and it, it's kind of nice that you you're coming from England here. Are are you seeing mm-hmm. are you seeing labors in the United States changing? Um, are you are you seeing kind of more women taking an active role in, in in what they want, or has it always been that way and it's just not really talked about? I don't think it's always been that way. I mean, I feel like it's taken a while for women to get back in their own um, in their own bodies and not be so scared of childbirth. I think America has um, a, there's a lot of fear attached to to giving birth and. Um, because of media and just because of, I don't know, it's, it's, it's definitely just not like this in pretty much everywhere else in the world. Um, so it's, you know, um, they trust birth more, I feel like, in other parts of the world. Um, in Europe, for example, and in Amsterdam and in England and, um, you know, Sweden and um, Australia, like, I, I, you know, the birth communities in those parts of the world are just, I feel so much more trusting of the process. Birth is so normal there. And here okay. it's, it's as, it's as um, dire and as terrifying as a car accident or a disease or, you know, something we have to fix or augment. So, you know, I feel like American women are kind of, they are doing more research. We are, we're busy. I mean, we're, we are constantly responding to mothers inquiring about a doula. Oh, that's so, wonderful. I mean, for me, that's, that's the, 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 the proof in the pudding. I mean, we are, we are nonstop. So I think women are kind of going, wait a minute, you know, I want, this is, this is my, this is the biggest day of my life. You know, my wedding is not the biggest day of my life, but <laughs> the, my, the birth of my child is. And it's amazing what people will spend on their wedding day, but then oh, birth, goodness, they just yes. want to, you know, that's, a whole lot. that's also another chef. But um, <laughs> so I feel, I feel like, you know, what we're, we are we aren't necessarily trying to have all natural births at home, um, but they want to feel like they know what happened. They want to feel involved. Um, they want to look back on it and say, you know, I'm happy with this. And because birth plans don't always, you know, they, they're more, we like to call them birth preferences. Um, but we really show that the moms are, they're trying more to, have a, they want to say, they want a hand in their birth experiences. And we see that more and more. Are, so are you saying that, uh, you know, uh, women in the States are, are kind of going the route of where Europe and the rest of the world currently is then? 
Yeah, I mean, Europe's been doing the West. I feel like the rest of the world has kind of always been doing it this way, and America went another way for a long time, uh -huh. um, and then has they're kind of circling back. I feel. I mean, but you know, statistics are still showing that the C-section rate is way too high, mm -hmm. and you know, things are still really imbalanced here. But there is a slight, there is enough of a shift happening that is that is. Um, I mean, it's noticeable. It's subtle, but it is noticeable. Yeah, I mean, we can we can we can definitely start talking about how you know pain meds start uh, you know in increased in contractions and and uh, you know in mm, increased in C sections yeah. and you know everything like that. Yeah, but. and I've we've attended dude. I mean, do is attend medicalized births, augmented births, intervent you know um, uh, inductions all the time. You know, it's really just about how the mother feels at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah well, yeah, yeah. That's really it. Yeah. And that's what that's what you're there for. Uh, okay, so yeah. um, you're you're seeing you know uh, uh, women in the states starting to take charge of their their births more and 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 have more of an active role in what they really really want to get out of it. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you? It seems like it seems like it's developing here. And and how are you outreaching to the community to educate them on what you're doing as doulas? Because you're saying that more and more people are talking to you, more and more families, wives, uh, mother, expectant mothers mm -hmm. are, are reaching out to you. Why is mm -hmm. that? And, and and are you? How are you actively reaching out to them? We provide. Um, we have a lot of meet and meet and greet slash. Um, childbirth ed slash, you know, just groups. We have uh, constantly at Carriage House, we have groups meeting up to talk about, um, you know, sexual abuse, um, childhood sexual abuse, uh, a lot of people coming together being like, why am I, you know, just processing um, things they might didn't get to in therapy and now they're pregnant and they're like, wait a minute, you know, we we provide all these groups and we let anybody come into our community space to teach them. And Instagram is huge for us, like I said, so we're constantly blasting these um, um, you know, promotions and um, classes and workshops um, all the time. And, you know, some people will just write to us through Instagram and say, and you just posted that moved me so much thank you you know and then they just they stay in touch i mean mm -hmm. it's just you know it's just um it really social media we, it plays a huge um huge part in our outreach it's 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 massive for us now um i think we have close to ninety thousand followers on Instagram. oh wow um that's amazing yeah and maybe it's just people that love pictures of beautiful pregnant bellies and some and or it's you know it's a safe place for a lot of women um who are processing their births or getting ready to have a baby i mean um so that's i'd say that's a huge part of it and then just what we offer at, at the actual space <laughs> okay uh, and, and it seems like just the common theme here is is community you know developing yeah it really community, is community, community talking and communication um and yeah. so i guess the final question here is uh would you recommend this job for people and who would you recommend this job for hmm that's a big question um <laughs> i feel like anybody who part. wants to give <laughs> no thank you um anybody who really wants to just give back and who wants to feel connected to people you know this is for you uh, this work is for you, you know, no, again, if you can come into it, come at it with a good tight knit community yourself and good self care rituals, um, you will be better off because again, the first responder lifestyle, the on call lifestyle is very challenging initially. So if you have those ducks in a row, um, and you really, really feel like you want to be there on the day, the biggest day of people's lives, um, because you really have something that you want to um, share with people, um, that you feel like energetically you have something to give to a brand new mother, you know, um, then this, this work is for you. I, I mean, I didn't initially feel that I had anything to offer a brand new mother. I just knew how to, um, I was very good at talking people down. I was very calming to be around. Um, you know, I loved meditation. I loved babies, <laughs> but slowly <laughs> over time, over time, yeah, I believed in prayer. I, you know, um, 
I love doing things for people. I grew up being that kind of kid, you know, a bit of mm-hmm. a caretaker. Mm-hmm. So it was nice to finally be paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, it, um, yeah, so I hope I rambled a little there, but I hope that that was hey, no worries. Got something in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. All right. Well, for any of you that are, are considering uh, becoming a doula, um, you know, I think Dama, you really provided a lot of great information on on what you do, and it's and it really is truly great to see, um, kind of the evolution that is occurring in the United States in terms of yeah. you know uh, labor and and mothers taking more more of an active role in what they'd like to see, and yeah. and you guys providing a, a really great service for them, um, and so Thank it, you. We'll, we'll definitely put put uh, your your um, in the carriage house birth in, in the link below and um, Great. definitely guys if, if you if you have any questions for Domino or doulas or want one uh, doula services um, definitely don't don't uh, don't hesitate to reach out to to Domino or 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 her company here to, um, to ask for their services <laughs> so well, thank you so much James yeah well thank you very much Domino I really do appreciate you 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 donate your time today to talk about your uh, your your career so <laughs> thank My you pleasure. very much all right cheers so thanks for tuning in guys thank you very much for listening and if you guys enjoyed the show listening etc the content um click that subscribe button below uh click the like button below that really does help me out um hopefully if any of you guys were considering doula and or doula services as a career um hopefully this really helped you guys out So until next week, stay safe, guys. Later.